Hello fellow bibliophiles and welcome back to Blatantly Bookish. I'm Marissa and today I am thrilled to announce Victober 2022. That's right, I'm always excited for Victober, but this year I'm even more excited, if that's humanly possible, because Kate Howe and Katie from Books and Things graciously invited me to co-host, along with Petra from Petra U and Roz from Scally Dandling About the Books. I'm honored to be a part of this amazing group, and I can't wait for all of the Victober fun. I'll link all of my co-hosts' channels down below so that you can check out their announcement videos and the personalized recommendations there, as well as just peruse their amazing channels. If you are not familiar with Victober, it is a month-long readathon that focuses on reading Victorian literature. All you really have to do to participate is to read one piece of Victorian literature in the month of October. That's it, and you have the whole month. But if you're up for a little bit of extra fun, each host has come up with a special Victober challenge. And there will also be a group read-along, which is the winner of the Goodreads and Twitter poll that Katie previously posted. There's also a Goodreads group for Victober, which I'll link below and which I urge you to join. And feel free to use the hashtag Victober on any and all social media platforms. So let's chat about this year's challenges. Kate's challenge this year is to read a Victorian work with chronic illness or disability representation. There's actually a lot of representation of characters with disabilities and chronic illnesses in Victorian literature. It seems to me more so even than in modern literature. Not all of it is positive representation, mind you, but disability and chronic illness was a major part of life in the Victorian era, and therefore in the literature as well. This is a time period before modern medicine and before the vast majority of workplace health and safety regulations. So accidents and injuries were common, and a bad break of an arm or leg could be disfiguring. Factor in mental health concerns and addiction to alcohol or laudanum, and there are plenty of different types of characters that one could explore for this challenge. I highly recommend checking out Kate's announcement video for her specific recommendations on Victorian literature that features chronic illness and disability. Katie's challenge this year is to read a Victorian buildings roman or coming of age story. Some of the most famous Victorian novels are coming of age stories where you follow characters through their formative years into adulthood. So do check out Katie's announcement video for all of those wonderful recommendations. My challenge is to read a Victorian short story. You could read just one short story or a whole anthology of them, whatever you choose. I am so excited about this challenge and I will share some recommendations and resources for my challenge a little later on in this video. Petra's challenge is to read a Victorian book and watch a screen adaptation of it. There are so many great screen adaptations of Victorian novels, and it's a lovely treat to finish a book and relive that experience again through film, or even watch multiple film adaptations of the same book to see how they enhance or change your understanding of the original. If you need some recommendations of Victorian novels that have been adapted to the screen, I highly recommend checking out Petra's announcement video. And Roz's challenge is to read a work of Victorian poetry, long or short. All too often I think of Victober and Victorian literature as a time to celebrate the Victorian novel, so it'll be exciting to delve into another genre and explore some Victorian poetry. Do check out Roz's announcement videos for some poets you might be interested in for this challenge. And finally, the group read for Victober this year will be The Mayor of Casterbridge by Thomas Hardy. I am so excited for this group read as it's a hearty book that I haven't read before, but that's been on my TBR for far too long. All I know of the mayor of Casterbridge is that the book begins with a man who, in a drunken rage, sells his wife and daughter. And then I imagine that the rest of the book is about him coping with that fateful action. This book could satisfy two of the Victober challenges. It satisfies Kate's challenge as it explores alcoholism as a chronic illness. 
and there are two screen adaptations of it. There's a 2003 adaptation of The Mayor of Casterbridge and a 1978 version as well, so it satisfies Petra's challenge too. The schedule for this group read-along is nice and simple and easy to remember. We will be reading two chapters a day, so we should finish up on the 23rd of October. So now that I've told you about the challenges and the group read, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about my challenge and give you some specific recommendations and resources, which I will also link in the description below. Shorter fiction was actually quite common in the Victorian era, and most of the large, chunky novels we think of as prime examples of Victorian literature were actually consumed by the public in serialized sections published in periodicals, magazines, and newspapers. Alongside those serialized columns, though, were similarly short works of standalone fiction, or short stories. Many of your favorite well-known Victorian authors, such as Dickens, Gaskell, Wilkie Collins, and Thomas Hardy all wrote plenty of shorter fiction as well, so you could explore some of their works or look for something a bit more obscure. You could read just one short story or a whole anthology of them, whatever you choose. There are gothic short stories, realist short stories, short stories that are actually historical fiction. There's really just such a wide variety of short story topics and authors out there for you to explore for this challenge. If you weren't able to do the group read from last October, you might consider Elizabeth Gaskell's Gothic Tales, which was great fun last year. It's an anthology full of Gaskell's spookier, more supernatural stories, including Disappearances, The Old Nurse's Story, Lois the Witch, The Poor Claire, and more. If you've already read Gaskell's Gothic Tales but are still interested in some spooky October vibes, you could check out Dickens's The Signal Man, Robert Louis Stevenson's The Body Snatcher, or Oscar Wilde's story The Canterville Ghost. I actually have a bind up here of Oscar Wilde's The Canterville Ghost, The Happy Prince, and other stories which I would love to get around to this month. If you're interested in creepy short stories, I also highly recommend the author Sheridan Le Fanu. I have this bind up of his titled In a Glass Darkly, and I highly recommend Green Tea and Carmilla, which I've read before. If creepy gothic stories aren't appealing to you this month, I do have some other resources for you as well. I'm a big fan of some of Gaskell's less creepy work, namely The Moreland Cottage, which was a precursor to, and arguably the inspiration for, George Eliot's The Mill on the Floss. And I also love Gaskell's story, Christmas Storms and Sunshine, which you might actually want to save for Christmas time. It's a heartwarming tale about two rival families who live next door to each other, but manage to find common ground and come together for Christmas. I've also found an anthology of short stories called Stories of Courtship on Project Gutenberg, which I'll link below. It's a series of five stories, one of which is by Anthony Trollope, and the rest are by more obscure Victorian authors. And I also found this book in my local library, which I'm excited for as well. It's called The Lifted Veil, Women's 19th Century Stories. It has, as the title suggests, George Eliot's story, The Lifted Veil, as well as others that I'm excited about such as The Green Dwarf by Charlotte Bronte, The Fatal Marriage by Mary Elizabeth Braddon, and The China Bowl by Charlotte Mew. I know that's plenty of recommendations, and obviously there are so many more options for this challenge than I could ever list here. So I will leave you with one more resource, and that is the most phenomenal website for this challenge. It's called the Victorian Short Fiction Project, and it's a digital archive put together by Brigham and Young University, where you can access about 300 Victorian short stories all for free. You can sort them alphabetically or by author, journal, date, or topic. It's really quite remarkable, and there are so many authors and stories on there that I can't wait to explore. So that is all the information about Victober that I have for you today. I am so excited for Victober this year. I would love to know in the comments down below if you plan on participating in Victober this year. What did you think of the challenges and what are you most excited to read or watch? I'd love to hear about your favorite Victorian short stories as well. Maybe you have some recommendations for me. 
Until next time, I look forward to seeing you in another bookish video very soon. Bye!